Hello, and welcome back to the Computational Genomics Lab. Um, today we are going to go over the sample sheet, which is a required input to the RNA-seq pipeline um, from NF Core. It's quite simple, um, and then we just need a couple other little pieces, and we will be running our first RNA-seq. Okay, so uh, for um, the previous video, we mentioned that you want to go to the NF Core website. The link is in the video. Uh, description and on here you want to read the usage and parameters and you've probably done that by now um, but you'll see one thing that's absolutely required is this sample sheet not only is it required um, you have to have it in the exact same format so I typically make these in Excel and file transfer them so I'm just going to show you that way um, and this will be set up for the data we're going to look at in class so here is an actual sample sheet, but you will have to customize it for, for yourself. So sample is telling the pipeline, well, what is this sample? And so right here we have WT underscore for zero, which means wild type cells with zero minutes of docs. The underscore 12 means 12 hours of docs, 24, 48, 96 hours of docs. So that's just a handy way. You can name your samples whatever you want, but you just want to be consistent. Um, with how you name them um, in this first column. And it has to say sample. It used to say group up until version 3.0. Um, by the way, I did decide to upgrade to the very latest version, um, 3.14.0. So that way we're, as of February 15th, 2024, we are as up to date as we can be. Okay, so back to the sample sheet, we have this first column, which is sample. Replicate, um, since we have three replicates of each sample, we want to put in replicate three, one, two. They don't have to be in order, um, which is kind of nice. Um, but then the, the pipeline can use this information to say, well, what's the variation within the replicates or what replicates look similar to each other um, and do some analysis for you. Okay, so FASTQ1 and FASTQ2 is if your sequencing run had paired end reads, which means it's sequenced from both ends, um, that's common nowadays. Uh, if you have single-stranded seq that you want to analyze on separate from this class, um, there's a simple flag in the, the documentation that you just add slash single end, um, and then it'll know what to do, and you'd only have one fast queue. But for most people um, in this time would have two fast queue files, one for the forward read and one for the reverse read of your fragment of RNA that was sequenced. And so um, what you want here is where are they? <laughs> the pipeline is going to start to run, do a bunch of stuff with NextFlow. And it has to go grab where your raw sequencing files are. So FASTQ files are raw sequencing reads, and we just simply need to tell it where they are. Um, so now if you're doing this locally on your um, computer, you might want to think about where you're going to put that. Um, and for, for this class, um, what I've done here is put them in scratch, shares, rin class, master class, and then if we look in here, I have a folder called data. Um, I recommend, and the class lessons are one step below here, um, and I kind of recommend putting all your data in, in a top directory, so then when you make these file paths to it, you can always just point to the same kind of region. Um, in there. Now if you're working from home on your own computer, you, you're you going to have to figure out where um, that path is. So I'm going to cd into where you want to keep your data. Um, so I have this folder in here called mouse wild type. I should mention we are doing the mouse first. Uh, time course for RNA-seq. We'll also do human. That'll be sort of a practical to see one and then um, do one on your own. Okay, so if I go in here, here's all my fast cues. And you can notice right away they say underscore R2 or underscore R1. And that's for read one or forward or reverse reads, however you want to think about it. And so what I can say is, okay, this is where they all are. So if I was making a new um, sample sheet, I could make a sample column, replicate, uh, they do have to be spelled exactly right, so we don't want to uppercase, we just want it all lowercase. Um, FASTQ1 here, and then I can start to paste this in. 
um, and then add the sample number on the end. So you want to do this as less manually as possible. So another thing I could do is copy the names of these files here and put those into Excel um, and then do join columns or other things so I could set them over here and then I could merge these rows. I'll leave it up to you how you want to do it um, or you can do it one at a time um, and eventually you'll be able to write scripts to just add the name to the file path. Okay, so what we want to really emphasize here is that there's a place for each of the raw sequencing reads and those are the most important input into the pipeline. They'll um, be here and then the last column we have is strandedness. Our sequencing data is unstranded. If yours is stranded, you would put stranded here. Okay, so it's really that simple, but believe it or not, this always sort of messes up because you're and if you store your data in the same place all the time and just make new folders, this becomes much easier. But it's easy to make a mistake with these file paths, so you just want to double, triple check it. Um, if you're in the class, this is where the data is. If you're doing this on your own computer, just uh, go to where the data is, do a PWD, put that in here, and then find the sample with underscore read1, put that in fastq1, underscore r2, read2, and fastq2. So it's simple as that, and once you're done, um, I'm not going to save this, but once you're done, you can then find out where you want to put it um, on your computer. Um, so it does, you're going to want to run the pipeline in a special folder just for that pipeline. It's going to make a bunch of folders for you. Um, so I made this one here called RNA-seq, and I, here's the file path I'm in. File pathing is really important. It'll become second nature, but you always want to know where am I, so that's where PWD is really useful. Um, so I'm in my class directory in RNA-seq. There's nothing in there, and we're going to start to populate the first few files we need um, for this class. And now we have a sample sheet. We have what the sample's name is, which replicate it is, where the FASTQ read 1 is, where the FASTQ read 2 is, and the strandedness of the sample. So that's step one. We have two more files to make and then we will be running the pipeline.